Hey guys, welcome back to Fat Fender Garage. And we haven't done a shop talk for a long time, so we haven't gone through the shop, talked about a lot of stuff that's going on here. But we're gonna do it today, why not? We've got Austin here, he's on the camera. He's gonna follow along while we go around the shop. We're gonna start and walk over to the fabrication department and we'll see if we can get those guys with the noisy sanders to be a little bit quieter as they're working. Probably not possible, we're, we're gonna try. So we're gonna sneak over to the fab department via the chassis, go to the body shop, kind of look at some of the projects we're working on and just kind of give you an update on some cool stuff. So are you ready? Let's go. All right, Jacob, Jacob. Just, just for a minute. All right, we got Jacob to be a little bit quieter. Just for a minute. All right, so over here is the fab department. Actually, we're just recording a little video a few minutes ago, so you'll see that up on uh, YouTube. But we've got a 19, I believe it's a 1953 Ford F100. Just, we had to put a new firewall, a new floor in it, and a few little parts to it. But we're ready to actually put it all together, get the motor back in it, and hopefully the new bed will show up soon, and we'll have it all put together. We'll kick it over to the body shop, and uh, it's gonna be a nice, clean build, but uh, super awesome. So here we have, a 1956 completely bare metal truck, but we're not gonna paint it either. We're gonna actually keep this in a bare metal state. When it's all done, we're actually gonna put a Cerakote finish on it. Well, I don't wanna open it. I'll mess something up is what will happen. And then they'll get mad at me. I believe we got uh, some really cool Ring Brothers hinges on it in uh, aluminum billet. And so really, uh, all this is gonna get redone in a nice nickel finish. These will, the bumpers will be nickel, this will be nickel. All the stainless steel trim will be polished. The rear bumper will have a nickel finish. And then we also have these Detroit steel wheels and these are gonna get a nickel finish on them as well. So they'll look pretty sweet. You can kind of sneak over here. They're just finishing up the wood bed and we hope to have the wood bed floor and everything kind of wrapped up soon. Not very far, honestly, this truck's gonna really leap ahead of a lot of other ones in the shop just due to the fact that once we get this to a point where we're about ready to sand it and grain it and make it look good, then we'll take it, we'll clean it with acetone really well, and then we'll send it over and have uh, a clear cer Cerakote finish put on it. It'll stay just like this, so a little bit cleaner than it is now, but definitely gonna be unique, super unique. I'm excited about this one. All right, if you look behind me, or behind you, in front of me, we have a 1956 Ford panel. Now this is the first time that we've actually done a complete panel in the shop. We've worked on some in the past, but actually doing one from the very beginning, this is the very first time we've done it. So it's big, there's a lot of square footage here. We've got a rendering uh, on Instagram, very light coppery, but uh, mostly a metallic orange with a lot of pearls in it and a couple dark gray stripes that go up and over it. But let's take a look inside. We've had a little bit of uh, work to do. We've had to you know, cut these out so we could get to some things. The guys are working on the inside of this. We got new tubs in it. We got the seat bracket we built to hold some TMI seats he's purchased. And then we've got the firewall all modified for the engine that he's got in it. Everything's been cleaned up. The gas pedal installed, a very smoothed out dash that we're gonna be putting a really cool Sony 10 inch kind of floating display. So we're not damaging the dash too much. Also we'll have a backup camera attached to it in a big box and you wanna be able to see behind you. That'll be very helpful. So just finishing up a few little things on this. We'll be ready to send this to the body shop pretty soon. Over here, we have a 1955. And so we're finishing up this truck here. It's all full air ride. It's our front and back half kit that we sell for Porterbilt. They're just kind of finishing this up enough to where it can hit the body shop here, hopefully in another week or two. We did widen the rear fenders so we could get a little bit more wheel and tire in the back. At the end of the day, we've got a full AccuAir system that'll be on it. Again, pretty uh, clean, simple build. Not, not too crazy, but at the same time, it's gonna be badass and it's gonna be fun to drive. So four Fords here that are all from that 53 to 56. I didn't realize we had so many that we were doing right there, but great customers great people you know they come here because we focus on details and we strive to do a really really good job and so are we perfect now nah, we make mistakes every now and then we got to fix those but at the end of the day a lot of cool bills now this one is actually a 1970 I think it is this one's my truck I picked this truck up from a guy I got a message on Instagram he had messaged me uh, Casey's paint shop I think Aaron Kaufman I think even Jeremy of Trey 5 if I recall basically said hey I bought this truck off eBay I live in 
I don't know, it's like Philadelphia. And I flew out to California. My son and I were gonna drive this home. He bought this thing sight unseen off eBay. So imagine, imagine how that's going to go, right? So he flies out, they're gonna have this great trip and they made it to Needles, California and blew, blew the engine. So uh, who knows how much oil it had in it, we don't even know. When uh, I saw the message, he just basically said, hey, just come buy this truck. I'm going to leave it here. We're going to abandon the project and we made a mistake. So I picked this thing up and we brought it here. That wasn't going to be the first problem he ran into. The tires were super checked. Like this thing was never going to make it there. But at the end of the day, we ended up with a cool truck. We actually have a front back half kit we're installing on this. We're not going to paint it. We got a, it's got a super cool camper that goes on it. We're putting a Godzilla motor in it with a 10R80. And the reason why is because this truck sits low and the 10R140 tranny is so big that I'd be more than likely replacing a tranny pan and a transmission potentially. It would be too, just too low. So along with hot rodding and new products and stuff that you got to have new solutions. And so, you know, definitely something that we hope to have up and running here in the next couple months, but uh, just kind of get a little R and D and some motor mounts figured out for us and hopefully for you guys too. So very cool. A couple more little cabs projects that we've done a lot of the rust repair and kind of prepped it so that it won't keep rusting. Anyways, let's uh, sneak over to the body shop. They got this curtain all around here. And so they actually have one swamp cooler dedicated to this room. It's like 10 degrees cooler here than it is the rest of the shop. And it feels much better. So these guys actually have it better than the guys out there. In the new shop we're moving to, we're gonna put air conditioning in the whole shop. So everyone's excited for that. But we got our last summer, we have to push through with just swamp coolers. These guys are jamming on this truck here. So this is a square body called Black Velvet. That belongs to our friend Paul Treadwell. We've got some really cool fabrication that's been done on this thing. Check out this hood. You've got this section right here, right? Comes up onto the cowl. On a regular square body, it stops right here and it doesn't continue on the cow. So Gage took an idea we had and ran with it. We kind of feathered it out onto the cow the same. So just give it a little bit of a huskier look and also it didn't look so flat. I didn't like the way the hood looked up here it just felt like it had a dip. The bumpers have been tucked extra tight and chopped and fit. Uh, that'll be a super tight fit. And they've got everything gapped, everything working. Right now he's testing the one piece windows out to make sure all that stuff is gonna go up and down properly. There's no weird flex in the door as it works. It's gonna be nice and tight. And so they're just dialing this stuff in. And once they get that done, they'll start the body work on here. But as you can see, we got guys working over here and they are jamming on the inside of this bed. We're gonna hit it really hard because we're gonna send this truck to SEMA. These are kind of the tedious spots in here. So we're trying to get that stuff done. One of the cool features that we did on this is most of these beds, this kind of actually angles up to about right here. And with the bumper and the way everything fit, we actually decided that it was gonna look better if we slice this, lower this down a little bit. So I had just almost a parallel look to the ground. You can see they've, they've got that done already. And Jamal is working on the other side. Let's go take a look. Jamal, how's it going? All right. Getting this side done. Getting this side laid out, mapped yeah. out. That other side looks really good over there. I like the way it turned out. Once this is all done and the bumper's on it, it's gonna look awesome. A Little bit of a hassle, but I think these are the things that make a difference. These are more flat, and we actually beefed this up right here and we created a little bit more of a lip on the back side of the square body to match the front. So usually that's pretty pretty soft little lip right there. When are you gonna be done? A couple days? <laughs> that's how it is around here. Hopefully a couple weeks. Oh, a couple weeks on the inside, come on. Oh, no, no, the oh. whole thing. The All whole right, thing. yeah, it's looking good. If you guys take a look, look at this panel on the inside right here. They're not really beaded panels. We actually used a pull max so we could actually make it look really deep and recessed in there so it looks more factory. When you see this truck done in the future, it'll all start to make sense what it looks like and why we did what we did. But for now, they just look like a bunch of squares. But when it all comes together, I mean, you look at the rendering, it's kind of a red truck with these large white impact stripes on the side of it. I think this will help tie all that in. Pain in the ass to do, but it's gonna look pretty awesome when it's all done. We got this truck here waiting for a hood. Once we get the hood wrapped up on it, it's actually ready for paint. This thing's gonna be awesome. Really dark, red, cherry. Check out the gaps on it. I mean, it, these guys have done just a phenomenal job. Yeah, so it's final prime, ready for paint. So, super cool. All right, 
let's get out of here because if we lived in California, this stuff would be cancerous, but luckily we live in Arizona. <coughs> All right, so we've got a cab in here, it's been painted a while ago. They're touching up a couple little things on the jams, but uh, Luis has already cut and polished it. And so it's essentially really close to getting mounted to the cab. Anytime you do satin clears and then you got three colors and they got to wrap into the jam, everything has to line up. It's actually kind of a pain in the neck, but it looks cool when it's done, but a couple little things are real close. We can come over here and see Luis. Luis, what's up? We're doing a little video. We haven't done a video in a while. This is uh, Luis here. And and he likes to fish. He likes uh, long strolls on the beach with his wife. And uh, he also likes working here at Fat Fender Garage. Right, yeah. And uh, so he's been with us for a long time and he's honestly one of the reasons why the body and paint looks so good here. Good attention to detail. He's got a good work ethic. He sees quality and knows quality. Honestly, uh, these guys are what make it look good. Take a look right here. I don't know if you can capture that, but this is where it's kind of shiny right here. And he's been sanding this. So you can see all the pearls in here, but once he starts to sand it, the clear kind of has, you know, that matte finish. And then he's, what are, you, what are you sanding it with right now? What grit? I started with 600, now I'm on 1,000. Okay, so 600, 800, 1,000. Then you go 15? 12. 12, 15. 2. 2,500. 20, okay, so. He's gonna be here a while. Sandpaper, even at 600 grit, it's basically got really fine little pieces of sand, rocks and stuff in there, right? And the finer grit you get, the smaller that gets. But you can't take too big of a jump, otherwise the sandpaper that you're sanding with doesn't have enough rock in it to clean out the heavier grit stuff. You have to take these natural steps, basically make the scratches super fine so that when he does get to the polishing, he can polish the scratches out. You gotta start with 600 because when you're spraying clear, you spray like this much clear, right? And then you overlap it. And so you got this constant like little wave inside of clear. Now it looks super flat to the naked eye, but you'll have a little bit of orange peel and then you have this wave. And if he starts with like 2000 grit, that just kind of will go over the waves. You'll have this perfectly mirror finish, but it'll look kind of wavy. And so he has to start with 600 grit and a hard block to make sure he gets and knocks all that stuff down and it's perfectly flat. So it takes a lot of time. And so these guys are, you know, skilled at what they do, getting it perfectly flat and then not overdoing it, not taking too much off, right? That's why he's, you know, gentle around these like certain little areas. He's careful, he won't hit this with 600. He'll start these at a little bit different uh, grit, you know, what, like 1500 or something like that. But he also wants it to be nice and clean and flat. This big body side is super important. Uh, that's what you're going to be able to ca capture those light rays off it and you'll know if it's flat or not. Once it's all cleaned and polished up, then they'll take this in the booth and then they'll spray bed liner on the bottom and then essentially this will be ready to go on the cab or with the cab onto the chassis. You saw the cab in the paint booth. So uh, very cool. These are, are these done, Luis? These aren't done, but the door's done. Yeah. The door's done, yeah. You got a rag? I don't use any rag. I'll scratch it. Look, I'm making them work. So we'll just get a little spot. You can kind of see when he gets it all cleaned up. Like it is literally flawless all through there. And there's some pearl in it. So when it goes out in the sun, it's gonna look super awesome. A lot of work. People want to know why paint costs so much. It's, it's literally all the details. When, you're, when you see a truck and you're drawn into it, it's usually what you hear and what you see. If it's parked and it's not running, Right, it's what you see and that's what draws you in. And that really is how good the body work is and how good the paint is. And it's really expensive, especially these really high-end builds like this, to have them just look the way they look. It takes a lot of time and a lot of materials. And so it's definitely not for everyone, but at the end of the day, people that have these trucks, they get to show them off and, and really get to share with the world, I really just think art, right? Like if you own a piece of art and you get to show it off, it's kind of cool and you and people appreciate art and maybe you can't afford a mona lisa right but that's okay you sure appreciate the fact that it exists right so all right let's keep going so here's a, a cool bronco we finished a few years ago decided uh, that he wants to sell it so this is for sale if anyone's interested i had it for a few years he likes it and he's kind of got other projects he's working on and so he's kind of ready to relinquish this so he brought it in for just a little bit of maintenance on a few things make sure it's ready to go but uh, pretty cool. 
It's a little bit filthy right at the moment. All right, so let's check this Bronco out here. This has been something that is really close. Uh, the wiring's like 99% done. A few little things that showed up last minute were these doors, for lack of a better word, little roll cage doors that will go on here. We had to kind of clean them up, straighten them up. We'll send them out and get them powder coated. We built some armrests right here so you don't burn yourself. Right now we're working on a top. He's got his roll cage that he had, but he had this really ugly vinyl top. And so right now we've got our upholstery guys kind of cutting, fitting, and getting it all designed. So this will have some snaps and different things are gonna fit. They've also got some bars with pad that they're gonna sew into it. So it's a super cool custom top they're building and putting on it. And you can see that it's gonna look pretty cool. Andy that's working on it is doing a really, really good job on it. We've got a lot of stuff in here. You can kind of see the rear quarter panels we designed. We did put, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna, I can't believe I'm even telling you this. So we actually got two, four, six, eight speakers in this, two amps, two eight inch mids here, wet sounds that are in here. These things are insane. We've got some nice mids and tweeters up front, and then we have two 13 inch JL subs, uh, the little low profile ones, all built in a box. Then there's a battery back here and all the stuff we had to go around. We got the amps mounted under the seat. We have literally put more speaker sound system in this thing than any other Bronco out there. I can guarantee you that. And honestly, it, it came together okay. It was, it was tough. We had some difficulty fitting some of this stuff in here, but we got it to work. We got a roll cage that was super tight right here. So we spent a lot of time just kind of trying to figure out how we're gonna design it and make it work and, and get it in there. We can actually take these panels in and out, believe it or not, even with the roll cage in it. He's got an onboard air compressor right here. He could almost run our shop off that thing, it's huge. He's gonna have air, he's gonna have an extra uh, front drive shaft if he needs it. He's got his jack, he's got his, his gas cans, not just any spare tire, but he's got another 40 inch spare tire. So we had to like overbuild this. It ties into here, so we make sure it's on nice and tight. Everything's been thought out. This customer has thought of everything. He's added everything. I sent a photo of it, a photo of a sink to him. I said, hey dude, we got everything in here but the kitchen sink. I says, I found a nice small one. I think we could add it to the back of the gas tank and get some water that can fill it up and you, you could use it out. And he said, sounds great. We just need to add a barbecue. I hope he's joking because I'm not adding the sink and we're not adding a barbecue. That right here is a truck we built about, uh, shoot, six years ago. He had his own chassis he brought in, drove it for a while. He saw all the chassis that we're selling now and he thought to himself, his name's Dallas. He thought, Dallas, time for a new chassis. So Dallas ordered up a chassis. He brought his truck in and now we're going through the process of making sure everything fits on the chassis just good. And then we changed the intake out to Holly's new EFI. We'll end up Cerakoting this, but we're actually gonna put a couple turbos right here. We got a new radiator, it's gonna go in here. And so we're gonna be working on uh, putting a turbo set up in this thing. And so it'll be pretty cool. It's gonna look good. It's gonna sound good. It's gonna be fast. It's also on air ride, so he's gonna be able to lay this thing out. It's gonna be super awesome. All right, so right behind you, we've got uh, a GMC pickup truck. We've got a brand new engine, rebuilt transfer case, a new fuel tank. And so hopefully here in the near future, we'll have this back down on the ground. We've got new wheels for it. We rebuilt all the axles and everything. We'll be ready to go. But uh, this was something that uh, he picked up at an auction and super nice GMC pickup truck. It's kind of cool. We can't really show it off to you, but another video. Low car makes a super nice engine, LS engine that looks pretty uh, factory and original. So just about got that done. Back over here, these guys are putting chassis together. We're kind of overfilled the chassis. We got four here. We got three at the other shop that we're still trying to get wrapped up and people are adding drivetrains and stuff to them. It's one of the reasons why we needed a new shop is because we needed more space. And so we're moving hopefully into this year. We've got offices that are being designed and built and we'll have about 41,000 square feet when we move into it. And we'll have some space in our chassis assembly line and just producing a real good quality Ford and Chevy chassis. Two more quick little things. We got a 56 Ford we're putting together, we're waiting for one or two little parts to show up. And then once we get that done, then we're gonna put the whole front end together and finish the back end and all the sheet metal will be done. And then we'll start wiring it up. We got the 6772 twin turbo truck here. Andre's just working on finishing up some interior stuff. And then we got a center console. I can kind of let you take a peek over here, but this one's about, you know, 95% done. You can see we're in the middle of getting the kick panels figured out. 
and getting those prepped and ready. We've got the door panels done, so uh, pretty cool. You know, it's something we've been kind of working on, hope to finish up here in the next few weeks. And then we got this super cool 1996 Bronco full coyote swap. We'll be doing a video on this actually today. So this will be coming out hopefully in the next couple weeks. Oh, let's go outside. One vehicle just showed up. Let's go look. We're gonna talk about this a little bit. 1949 Ford F1. Now, how do you know that this truck does work? Well, because of the bugs on it, obviously, but a trailer. Come on, let's look. So believe it or not, this truck has a trailer hitch on it and we just went and actually got some product. So this is a chassis we just picked up. We're gonna start assembly here shortly. We'll send it to powder coat, make sure it's ready to go. But this essentially was made to tow. And so you can see you've got the hitch here. This can come up, clears out of the way, and then he can actually tow with it. So, and when he's not towing with it, you can hide the hitch and it's super cool. You've got a backup camera here as well. So when you're backing up to it, you can kind of see what's actually going on. We've actually got airbags on it so it won't squat it too badly. So part of our uh, testing of this truck uh, we're almost at a thousand miles and so we went and put 15 20 miles on it with towing a trailer to make sure everything was okay and it ran flawlessly and so we're pretty excited about it uh, super close to being finished you can kind of check this thing out we're oh he's got it locked so got a key fob with a lock on we can kind of check it out inside so all right well that's it that's going to be the end of our uh, shop talk or our shop tour or whatever you want to call it. I'm Jason with Fat Fender Garage. I own it and I'm glad that you're able to follow along with us. Stay tuned and subscribe. We've always got a lot of cool products and stuff. We're kind of showing off and uh, all the fun things that people get to do with their trucks. Hopefully this will inspire you on your own build and your own truck, whatever it is you're working on. And uh, with that, we're out of here. I gotta go to work.